Thank you, Lars. Uh, dear friends, uh, participants, I'm delighted to be with you in this totally gender unbalanced uh, room. Uh, and I also apologize for spoiling your coffee break. Um, I particularly appreciate the title of your conference, Beyond the Obvious. In Europe today, we must go beyond the obvious when it comes to safeguarding mental health. And it is a great honor and a pleasure to discuss with you this subject at such a timely uh, moment, an opportune timing, only two days after the presentation of our communication on mental health. Beyond the obvious efforts to address mental health through health policy and institutional care, we should look beyond the boundaries of health and care. We must look at health as a cross-cutting horizontal priority. Mental health is no longer a clinical issue. It is an issue for society and at the same issue a major concern for the economy as well. And this is precisely what we do by addressing this key link between culture and well-being. A link that demonstrates the core of our human connection our ability to care for each other. This is at the heart of who we are. This is a key component of our European way of life. Caring for each other is the model of society we stand for as Europeans. And I could not think of a better place to explore this issue than Elefsina, European culture capital for 2023. It was a pleasure and an honor to be here in January, February, early February, when we launched the European capital, a city of such rich history and culture, one that has brought great honor to my homeland. And of course, it would be impossible to talk about the European capital of culture, Elefsina 2023, without paying my respects to a remarkable woman that made this vision a reality, Despina Yerulan. Uh, although Despina is no longer with us, her legacy in Elefsina is palpable. We can feel her imprint throughout the city, the impact on the cultural work she engaged throughout her life including this last chapter of preparing for Elefsina 2023. Let me share a quick parallel for this theme of caring, one that comes straight from the Greek mythology, but also inextricably linked to Elefsina. And what story could be more emblematic of caring than a mother who refuses to give up on her daughter. So when Dimitra, goddess of fertility and agriculture, found that her daughter, Persephone, had been abducted by Hades and taken to the underworld, Dimitra, as all mothers, was devastated. The seasons halted. Life itself stopped. This is the power of human connection. It keeps us moving, it keeps us alive, it gives meaning and purpose to our life, especially in moments of crisis. And yes, Europe has been through many important, deep, intense, transformative stressors these last years. We faced a global pandemic, the first to hit humanity since 1918. The pandemics seriously limited our ability to be together, to live in society. It made proximity and affection a threat 
to our physical health, and at the same time, it took a serious toll on our mental well-being, especially for young Europeans. And immediately after that, Russia's invasion of Ukraine has displaced millions of men, women, and children. Their lives were interrupted, fighting to stay connected to their families, to their hometowns, but also connected to Europe, which proved a major harbor, a refugee, an asylum destination. All these transformative stressors, all these risks, along with our personal everyday struggles, exact a heavy toll. And even before the pandemic, one in six Europeans suffered from some sort of mental health issue. This proportion totals 84 million Europeans and brought an estimated cost of over 600 billion euros to our economy, more than 4% of Europe's DGP, GDP. And the effects were not distributed evenly for all. The ones who suffered most were young Europeans and elder Europeans. Young Europeans are now starting again to build their social networks, to recover lost opportunities in learning, training, socializing, mobility, love. All this was suddenly taken away from them at a crucial moment of their lives. And it's not an accident that suicide is the second cause of death amongst young Europeans after road accidents. Elderly Europeans were also deeply affected, but from a different side of the pandemic, the loneliness pandemic, especially since the confinement and the direct impact to their lives, cutting them from their social surroundings and from opportunities of care and talking to people they love. Throughout this crisis and transformative stressors, one thing keeps coming back, one word. And this word is connection. The worst feeling one can have in a situation of crisis is being alone, is being isolated, cut off from others. Carrying the weight of a mental health issue and having to do it alone. And this is where I come back to the story of Dimitra. Persephone, her daughter, was in literal hell in the underworld in Hades. She was unable to ask for help, voiceless in her suffering, without her mother. But Dimitra did not give up. She worked hard to restore her connection with Persephone, recognizing that in the moment of suffering, she needed more than anything else, her mother's support, just like our baby here. So this is what culture does best. It connects us to one another. Culture leaves nobody behind. It pulls us up even when we are unable to ask for help. And at their most basic level, culture, art, expression, simply sharing and listening to each other are anchors that define who we are. And without exaggerating, I would say that these anchors are more European than many of us can think. Finding the elements, the emotions that unite us amongst the diversity we represent brings a common thread, and this is culture. We are strong because we are not the product of a similar uniform process. 
there is not a homo europeus, but yes, there is a corpus valorem europeus. We are product of the same value system. And this is what unites us. This is what connects us. When we started working with my colleague Stella Kyriakides on this mental health communication with the active support of the president, everything reminded us that uh, culture pulls us up and brings us together. So we said, we cannot treat mental health in isolation. We need, I know that the term has been repeatedly abused, but I will uh, do it again. We need a holistic approach. We discussed this last February when I was with you. Lars reminded us for the Cultural Deer for Europe in Brussels. And I said to you then what I'm saying again today, that mental health is not a portfolio responsibility. It's not a sectoral scientific domain. It is something that needs to be fertilized by the work we do across the policy spectrum. From the start, we didn't, know, we didn't do this communication strategy alone. We did it together with the member states, with the European Parliament, with stakeholders, researchers, citizens, NGOs. In fact, this initiative was also a response from a very specific request that came out of the Conference on the Future of Europe. Now, we do have a strategy. We do have guiding principles, and I suggest we discuss and concentrate on implementing those. First, prevention. Second, access. Access to high quality, affordable, mental health care and treatment. And third, reintegration into society, into the economy after the recovery. Rebuilding and reinforcing the social connections that allow suffering to heal, to manage, to process. And this social impact, this social aspect is extremely important. We need to recognize that mental health is everyone's concern and it is important for us to show solidarity to each other in this whole of society approach. And mental health is connected to every aspect of our lives, our places of learning, our jobs, our cities, our towns, our families, our goals and our ability to achieve them, the challenges we face, the skills, the capacities that we have to look at a hopeful outlook for the future. And the communication that we presented two days ago precisely takes all this into account. And since everything in life needs also resources, we put our money where our mouth is with identifying some 1.23 billion euros available from various EU funding sources to transform this vision into reality. Let me give you three specific example, examples among the 20 flagships that we foresee in this major initiative. First, our health professionals, our teachers, our social workers, all tell us that they need better skills and better training. Via a major training and exchange program for professionals of about 9 million euros, we will bring health professionals, teachers, social workers together for more and better quality training. This initiative will also develop a toolkit for a multidisciplinary approach to capacity building for mental health. Secondly, we are creating an EU repository that will compile all our member states' best practices in order to learn from each other and encouraging the creation of national websites to inform people where they can find help. Every European who needs access to help to face mental health issues must have this right of access as a universal guaranteed right. He does not have to bargain for it, he does not have to beg for it, 
all across Europe, there will be an obligation to deliver access to help. And thirdly, we are proposing healthy screens, healthy youth action. This is an initiative that would protect the younger generation in an even more digitalized world. Dear friends, this communication is a seed that we wish to grow. It's not the final outcome, it's not the final destination, it's the beginning of a journey. It's a process. We know that we are not starting from scratch. A lot of work has been done already, and the soil on which we will place this seed is fertilized. This was the case, for example, with the work of our colleagues from the WHO, who have been pioneers in looking into mental health and the role of arts and culture. They published a report back in 2019, and there is now ample scientific proof for the healing properties of culture when it comes to mental health. And the contribution of culture to the improvement of mental health was already identified with previous and current actions like the Culture for Health Action, which precisely brings us together here today. And I see, I'm very satisfied to see the logo that confirms that we have been co-financing your stay here. Um, Culture for Health has done essential work under the leadership of uh, Cultural Action Europe. Both your scientific literature review and your policy recommendations are very thought-provoking. We know that partic participatory art activities reduce anxiety and depression. They improve mood, well-being, self-expression, empowerment, as well as increase social engagement, bonding, and inclusion. In group settings, these participatory arts activities are even more effective at reducing loneliness and simply meeting as a group. And we have seen in your six pilot projects some telling examples about how the arts and culture can live together. Look, for example, at the group, the group singing for mental health pilot, helping mothers with postpartum depression, implemented in Romania. And we have to do more in this area since we need to help mothers come together, be creative, be themselves, and be each other's support. So, dear friends, our soil is rich for projects like this. And we have a panoply of emblematic projects and programs like Creative Europe, Erasmus Plus, Horizon Europe, that do have large envelopes to support this type of activities. And let me conclude by saying that now is the time to utilize all this wealth of resources, of experiences, of priorities, and transform diagnostics to action. We do not have to spend much more time on words. Now it's time for policy implementation on the field. For our part, uh, we are paying close attention to the policy recommendations of the Culture for Health report and will continue to work with you and will continue to support and empower you. Uh, it makes me very happy to see that uh, culture on prescription is now being implemented here in Greece and that you will have a chance to listen to Professor Stefanis in a while, right after my, my intervention, and other renowned Greek speakers on that. And uh, leaving you, seeing you here as a group in Europe's capital of culture, in this emblematic city of Elefsina, I know, I'm convinced, that all of you, like Dimitra, will not give up. You will not give up even when those around you who have been kidnapped, who have been condemned in loneliness, who suffer, would require your support. Art and culture are above else believing in others, supporting others, and not giving up on them. 
these seeds that we are planting will grow. And you should have the absolute certainty that the European Union will stay on your side along the way. Because as I was telling you in February in Brussels, Europe is not just a geography. Europe is a union of values, a powerhouse of ideas, of creativity, of diversity, of care, of solidarity. No one in Europe should feel alone in this passionate journey, because very simply, Europe is all of us, and us is Europe. Thank you very much.